Hello everyone. Second damage today for our power supply. We have analyzed it, and since I see that you like videos, don't forget to subscribe to YouTube and click the bell icon so you don't miss any video. Well, let's get started. What damage do we have today? Well, the power supply is trying to start, but it can't, meaning it produces a voltage at the beginning and then cuts off. It produces voltage and cuts off. That's why it does like producing pulses outside. Let's see exactly what it does. I will plug it in. If you remember well, I have placed a bulb at the output and you will see now what it does. So you see over here, the light is flickering. It's at 12 volt we had set at the output and it causes this issue. It cannot stabilize the voltage at 12 volt. Let's see, let's see. At most precisely what is happening, I will measure at the output to see if it does it at all voltages. We said the light is at 12 volt, so I'll measure at 25 volt. I will see at 24 volt if it gives voltage over there and simply the 12 volt do this mess. So the 24 volt are over here, and I see it does exactly the same. You see how it reaches up to 24 volt and zeros. Let me change the scale so you can see it better. You see 25 volt zero, 25 volt zero. It cannot stabilize the voltage and does it with all voltages. So what I'm thinking is that the oscillator driving the MOSFET does not provide proper oscillation continuous oscillation. It tries to start and stop. Let's take a look at the plan. First of all, I will check the input voltage if it is correct, the 3 temple transform at the output, which leads the first movement of the oscillation to see if it is done correctly. And I don't know and I don't know, and these volts do not stick over here. That is where the 400 volt I write over here are after rectification where I should find the 310 volt with health to see if these volts exist and if they are stable. Let's measure on the board. So here it is, the capacitors I should have. Let's go for the 410 volt. As I mentioned in the previous video, I set the scale to 1000 volts and measure. I see that I have 316 volts. I also see the light I had goes off, so I can't see if the voltage is sticking. You see it's stable at 315 volt, 360 volt. So it's correct from here on, and the next measurement will be on the MOSFET on the middle pin that I said to check if it gives the values over here, if it probably gets 310 volt on it. So I put the probes on the terminals, and I put the middle pin to see what the multimeter does. I see here that with the light bulb, my multimeter gives me an error. What did we say that there in the middle toe, we cannot measure the ohmmeter? Because when it removes the bandages, it confuses the ohmmeter, so it means that it's trying to remove the bands there, the complete one, but it cuts, as we said, so it's definitely from the bands. My problem. Yes, it does remove some bands, but the lands are not correct. It cuts off, meaning it takes out the lands and stops. I also see that when I unplug it from the socket until the capacitors discharge, it still oscillates. All right, what am I thinking now? Well, we had said that in the completed circuit, in order to start oscillating, it receives a command from the 400 volts, which we indeed have, the 3 and 10 anyway, which we indeed have and are not stuck. And then as soon as the first oscillation starts, it receives power from the designer. So either I'm missing the 310 volt above the completed circuit, or I'm missing power from the designer it receives to continue the oscillation, or there is a problem with the completed circuit anyway. That's my thought. Let's take a look at it in the diagram. So here we are again, we will go to the completed circuit below here, and we see over here we should find the 310 bull that I measured before and were correct. Here at the eight leg, right here, I must have a tendency to start the integrated. And as soon as it moves to produce oscillations, I must now have a tension on the sixth leg that will operate the integrated. Coming from over here and from the designer, so here I must have the tension that operates this integrated after the first oscillation and go a little halfway to the design. Here from my designer at this point here, half a minute, okay. At this point here, I must have a tension that here we ignite this diode. And we smooth out this density over here. And since the alternating tension produced by the designer is difficult to measure, 
Why is it in large years and the multimeter doesn't measure it? Where is this point located? It will be easier to check the resistance and diode located below here to see if my circuit is working correctly. So I will check resistance diode. I will measure here at the output to see if it gives me the voltage and see how I will proceed. Let's go to the board to see it. So here we have put a fuse. I will measure at the 8 pin of the integrated circuit. Let me see if the 310 volt are finally coming. And what's happening? I see here I have 310 volt. And just as I'm about to give the first pulse, the 310 volt drop. There, now when the 310 volt are cut off, I need to find at pin 5. Sorry, at pin 6, I need to find the voltage coming from the transformer to power this integrated circuit. I will measure on the diode I mentioned before at the diode output. I see that I have 0 volt. As for the flickering, to see the bulb outside light up. But here at the diode, which is supposed to power the bulb, I have zero volt. And if I try to measure back at the transformer, where I said the voltage is not measured with the multimeter, we will see what the multimeter shows at fault. Look over here. And this shows, though, what it produces. It means that the volts are going to come out in the alternating current. So my problem is somewhere here. You see that the alternating voltage is not being supplied, or the capacitor is short-circuited, or my family is consuming the voltage, and everything is short-circuited. If I now connect and pulse here, you will see that it produces the volts normally on the outside of the alternating current, but it is not being supplied. Well, I will unplug it, and we will measure with the multimeter the easy parts, which are the resistance, the diode, and if the capacitor is short-circuited. I will use the scale on my multimeter here that measures the diode and is also a buzzer over here. It measures the diode and the buzzer. And I will measure the diode first to see what's going on. Okay, here is the fuse box. I connect the multimeter and it shows a short circuit. First error, so the fuse box seems burnt. Let's also check the resistor that is before the fuse box. The resistor is here. I measure it and see that it is also burnt. It doesn't show any resistance. It is a zero resistance, and it doesn't show anything. So in this case, I think that the first fuse blew, overloaded, and also burnt the resistor located here. So let me show you a closer look down here. Here is the fuse box, you see, which says D20, and right next to it is the resistor that reads zero on top. It is a zero useless resistance over here. These two have definitely been called, so I will replace them, and then we will see what has happened. Okay, here we are again. I have changed the fuse and resistor, and let's plug it in to see exactly what it does. Great, we see that the circuit breaker worked. The light is on steadily, so it outputs 12 volts. It also outputs the other voltages, so we are okay. That was the video. We watched the videos we made to reach the diagnosis of the fault and the way of thinking. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You can follow me on my page at ecoelectronics.gr, and I'm looking forward to your comments. Hello everyone, 